Here we go. We are live. All right. Do you want? Can I make you a co-host again, or do I need to wait until people come in? Yes, if you want. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Looks good. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Noreen, Gloria, Debbie, glad to have you on board. Hi, Gloria. Good morning. How are you today? I'm great. I love your wall display behind you. Oh, I didn't realize how I had my <laughs> That's camera. Beautiful. That's Thank beautiful. Thank you. Oh, hi, Debbie. Good morning. How are you? Great, thank you. How are you? I'm excellent. Thank you very much. Hello, Ian. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. Where are you joining from? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. How about, how about everyone else? Where are you joining? Hi, Chris. New York. New York. Awesome. Well, Long Island, but that's still New York. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, good morning, everyone. I'll give people a few minutes to get on board, and then we'll go ahead and I'll start by uh, sharing my screen. Uh, I hope you're here for Kahuli Inspired Alcohol Painting on Glass. That's what we'll be. Uh, that's what we'll be doing together this morning, bright and early where I am. I'm in. I happen to be in Chicago right now, so it's 8 a.m. here. Oh wow! Uh, a beautiful. I have a where I'm sitting right now. I'm I'm at my um, daughter's boyfriend's house, and I am overlooking Lake Michigan. And, it, and the sun came up over the lake this morning and it was absolutely breathtaking. Oh, so what wow. a wonderful way to greet the day. <laughs> Just wonderful. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Hi, Katie. Oops. Oh, yep. There we go. Now, just give me one second while I get everybody organized here. Sarah, can I share something before? Absolutely. Because I, I'm going to have to leave a little bit earlier, but uh, I lived in Tacoma, Washington, okay. and about four or five miles from the warehouse where uh, Chihuly started his artwork. Oh, are you kidding? And I went there several times to watch some of the students that got started with him. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. So, Have you taken Donna's class on the Chihuly art? Um, she does a Chihuly art. Uh, I can't remember the total title of the class. Max, if you've got a minute and you could look that up, it's Donna's class on Chihuly art. She's doing a, an overview of the Chihuly art, art, the specifically um, Dale Chihuly. So, you might really enjoy that class. They asked me to do, they said, what, is there any kind of craft that you can do in conjunction with Chihuly, Chihuly's glass art? And I said, well, I think this might be a perfect fit. So that's how we landed on, um, that's how we landed on the um, alcohol painting on, on glass. So, um, but I'm, I'm just loving it. So it's great. All right, well, welcome everyone. Good morning. I'm Sarah and I am your get set up guide for this class. I normally, um, come to you from Everett, Michigan. That's where my home is. Um, I spent 22 years in K-12 education and um, re I'm a recently retired elementary principal. Good time to re retire during COVID. That was uh, excellent <laughs> timing on my part to turn the right age at the right time. Um, I did spend two years of my career as a uh, specialist for the Office of K-12 Outreach for Michigan State University, which was definitely a highlight of my career. I live by quotes and I love this one. It's one of my favorites. People do the best they can with what they know. And when they know better, they do better. And the reason I like this quote is because it says to me that as long as I am here on this earth, I can learn something new. Um, and I strongly believe that. I just strongly, strongly believe that. And um, so in January, when I had some downtime, I was scrolling through my Facebook feed 
and I saw a get set up advertisement hopped over on there and I've taken over 40 classes myself I got set up at this point um and I just thought this is just really a perfect fit because they obviously believe the same thing and so I enjoy really enjoy my partnership with get set up uh, we learn from each other I I you know I get to teach on here but I also learn from my learners um it's, it's a wonderful sharing experience um ideally I can see when the cameras are on where that helps me is when I'm teaching, if I see that you've got a, a frowny face, I know that I might be missing the mark and I can you know, revisit the information and make sure, uh, make sure I um, share it correctly. Um, but if you wanna keep your camera off, that's okay. And I fully understand that. If you are joining us by live stream today, I'd love to welcome you to uh, watching us. Um, but just know if you want to be interactive with us, you should hop on over to the getsetup.io website and sign up directly for a class. That way, um, that way you can interact. You can ask questions and uh, and um, make comments, and we all love that. Oh, there it is. Uh, the color. There's Donna's class. The colorful world of Chihuly is um, Donna's class. If you want to try to search it on the Get Set Up website. Um, if you want to ask a question, um, you can type it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Um, I do have Max on board for a couple more minutes. He's my tech support person this morning. Um, and if you are having any tech issues, if you chat with Max, he'll help you out. Um, but right now I'm assuming everybody can hear me and everyone can see my shared screen. Great. Thank you for that. All right, so here's what we're gonna um, be covering today. We're gonna cover why you should use Alcohol Inc. at all, um, steps to complete, completing a project using Alcohol Inc. and glass, and the benefits of whether we should seal it or not when we get done. Um, I'm wondering if anybody has anything in particular they're hoping to learn about Alcohol Inc. today. Um, or a reason specifically that you signed up to take the class. And if you did, go ahead and unmute yourself and share it with me. Good morning, I'm Pat. Um, I, I use Alcohol Ink quite a bit in um, making greeting cards, using it on UPO paper yes. uh, and photo paper. Uh, and I, I tried it on um, tile. Okay. And I know it's very unforgiving, but it just doesn't work out well. And I also, I have a collection of glass that I'd like to start using it on. So Okay. All right. Well, it'll be interesting to see. I do some of my practice projects on UPO, UPO paper in our demonstration today. I tried it on uh, UPO paper before I committed to, uh, before I committed to glass. <laughs> so anybody else, something you're hoping to learn or whether you're familiar with the ink, the medium we're going to be talking about today? What kind of paper again? It's called UPO. It's spelled Y-U-P-O. And it really is a plastic paper with a very smooth surface. But as Pat mentioned, you can also use, um, Pat, you use glossy, right? Glossy photo paper. I do, but I use it on the opposite side. I don't find that it works well on the glossy side. I did read that somewhere that it works better on the opposite side. I've not tried the photo paper, but that would be a much cheaper option. Um, yes, <laughs> that's a much cheaper option than the UFO paper. Um, the one I used, uh, I, got, I think I got it with me. This is what I ordered from Amazon. It's called Pixis. Um, and it came, oh, I can't remember how many pages were in this. Uh, 25 sheets, five by seven. And it was about, I want to say $10 or so. And that was a lot cheaper than the Yubo brand. Um, and then what I did was I cut it in half. And my samples, um, my samples that I tried before I committed to glass are all on that, on that paper. And I really enjoy working on the paper. It really does have a nice surface to use. So and we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. But if you're going to practice before you commit to glass, use a cheaper, use a cheaper option. Give us the name of the one you just showed on the screen. Pixis, and it was spelled P-I-X-I-S-S. -S. P I X I S S. And I and Thank you. 25 five by seven sheets. So um, I'm going to talk just a hot minute about, um, about Dale Chihuly. He is a glass artist, an American glass sculptor 
and an entrepreneur. His works are considered to possess outstanding artistic merit in the field of blown glass. I, I love seeing, I don't know if you've ever seen a blown glass artist um, at, a, at an outdoor event, but they are amazing. Um, and he moved into the realm of large scale sculpture. So as you can see, this picture on the right is one of his pictures. Um, and that's the top of a, a, a large building. And that, that flower um, statue, I guess, for a lack of better words, is very, very large. And the picture that was on my opening screen was also his. The reason I picked that particular picture um, was because it looks so much to me. I'll go back. This looks so much to me like the alcohol ink, doesn't it, Pat? It just really reminds me of, of that. And so that was that was kind of fun to choose that picture, but he does all kinds of glass art and he's become quite famous for it. Um, and that's the name of, again, that's the name of Donna's class. She's doing the colorful world of Chihuly with Donna, if you wanna know more about Dale Chihuly and his art. Um, and this class was created to accompany it and give a craft that everyone could do um, to, to kind of get some experience with uh, and have some fun with it. So why should you use alcohol ink at all? Well, what it is, is it's a highly pigmented alcohol-based ink. Um, so what that means is it's translucent. So if you put it on glass, you can see through it, um, which is kind of a neat characteristic as opposed to something that's opaque and you can't see through. So like, for example, if you took straight alcohol ink and dropped it onto black paper, you'd never see it. It really is translucent um, and it's solvent based, not water based. And that's what makes it a little tricky to work with. It's actually flammable. Um, and there it is. If you if you uh, Google it, you can find techniques on dripping it on and setting it on fire. I did not do that for today, but you can actually do that, which is quite fascinating to me. Because it's solvent-based, you can't clean it up with water either. Um, but the, to me, the easiest thing to use is um, the rubbing alcohol, which is why I had that in the, um, in the um, materials for today. You can also use hand sanitizer. Um, this is Ranger ink over here, this display, and Ranger makes a solvent. Um, if you want to pay a lot of money for a solvent, you can get the Ranger brand. Um, but I found that the, um, the rubbing alcohol and the hand sanitizer both worked very well. Um, you can use it on any hard surface like glass, metal, plastic, ceramic, stone, leather, polymer, clay, and shrinky dink plastic. That's the plastic. I don't know if you've ever seen it. it you can buy it. It's called shrinky dink plastic. And you put your alcohol ink on it and then put it in the oven and bake it and it, and it shrinks. And so a lot of people will use that to make jewelry. Um, and that's a lot of fun to do that. Um, the UPO paper that I talked about earlier is actually a, a very smooth plastic. That's why it works. If you put it on a regular paper, like let's say you decided you wanted to use it on copy paper or cardstock, it soaks right in and it won't move around. And that's what makes it so interesting is the way that it moves around. So um, once it's on a surface, it evaporates very quickly. Um, I saw ranges of... Um, five to 10 seconds before it'll dry. Now there's things you can do to extend that drying time, but it does evaporate very quickly and you can mix it for different colors. Any specific questions on alcohol inks before I move on? Uh, Benita, hi. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, before this class, I never heard the term uh, this alcohol ink. Yeah, I use the medium these uh, uh, paint oil paints. Yeah. So today for the today's class, can instead of uh, alcohol ink, I use these uh, colors it, just they for won't, they won't react the same way. Oh. So what happens when you drop the rubbing alcohol on is it spreads. And what you oh. have won't have that property. That's, okay. Yes. So, yes, that's a great paint, just not to get it to do the I never heard that. it. Even. Yeah. I mean, I first time came to know about this term. Yeah. Well, let's see if you like it. We'll, we'll follow okay. along and let's see if you like it when we get done. Other Thank questions. you. Thank You're you welcome, so Anita. You're welcome. Other questions on alcohol ink? Uh, no, thanks. Okay. Glad item of UPO paper protection for work area. Yeah, I'm gonna, oh, 
Okay. All right. Okay. So these are the supplies that I used. Um, I used a you can use for today's projects. You can use a glass item or you can use the UFO paper that I've already talked about. You're going to want to protect your work area. So I used, a, this is a cookie sheet that I got from the dollar store. It's got, you can, you know, a cookie sheet has lips all the way around the edges. And I was really happy that I had those edges. If not, you're going to want to lay down like news, thick newspaper or something to protect your surface because um, it gets messy. Um, paper towels to clean up. Um, the isopropyl alcohol, 90% or higher was the recommendation. If you only have like, I think 71% might be a common percentage and it'll work. Just not quite, it, it's not, you probably as a beginner wouldn't notice the difference, but it does make a little bit of difference. Um, alcohol ink in the colors of your choice. And down here on the, at the bottom, what I've got is I've got uh, regular alcohol inks and I have pearl alcohol inks and the pearls give a pearlescent quality that is very nice. Um, you're going to want a spray bottle or an eyedropper or, uh, or um, something to drip your uh, alcohol onto the ink. And then what is my other thing that's down here that I can't? Oh, and gloves if you want. Now, for the demonstrations that you're going to see today, I did not use gloves. I can't stand the feel of them on my hands. So at the end, if we have time, I'll show you a video on how I clean my hands when we got done. Um, so those are your supplies. So here's like the overview, the big picture steps. Like these are, this is like, if you want to break it down into its very basics, it's these four steps. You're going to wipe down your jar or your dish with your paper towel dampened with rubbing alcohol and let it dry, which takes very, very little time. And then you apply your ink. Hi, Phyllis. Then you apply your ink and then you dry it. And there's options. You can let it air dry. You're going to see me using a hair dryer quite often. And then if you want to, when you get done, you may seal it. Um, and so those are, the, those are the basic steps. That's it. <clears throat> These are all the different things that I made that uh, when I was playing around with the alcohol inks. And I'm going to show you four methods um, today. We're going to look at four methods of doing the alcohol ink. So the first method is drip. Um, and so with that one, you drip the ink and spray it with alcohol, or you drip the ink and drip alcohol on top, on top of it to make the ink spread. Smooshing, I just, I, I love just to say that word, smooshing, it's a great technique. Um, we're going to use the plastic wrap or crinkle technique, and we're going to use blotting. So <clears throat> um, this was a drip and spray. I did both drip and drip and drip and spray on this glass block. I did, this is uh, blotting over a stencil. This is blotting just with a cosmetic sponge. This was smooshing. I smooshed on the salt and pepper shakers. And these were both examples of the plastic wrap technique. And we're gonna go through each one of those. So um, this is the drip or spray method. Um, and these are my sample cards. Um, that I did first. I wanted to do the cards before I did the uh, before I did the glass, and so I put my cards down on the on the um, on the cookie sheet, and then used that as my surface. I sprayed it and I uh, dripped it. Now this is the spray, um, and you can see when I sprayed it, I sprayed it in one direction and blew it with a hair dryer, and it makes what they call the tidal wave or the wave effect. And if you look up wave effect for alcohol ink, you'll find lots of demonstrations on how to do that. That's one of the things that is, uh, and who was it earlier? Vanita, you were asking me about your paint. This is why your, your paint won't do this. I don't think no matter how much you thin it, it would do that, that right there. And over here, this is the drip technique, um, but I added colors later on, but you can see here's where I dripped it. So as opposed to like this tidal wave effect, you get these large drip marks and it's just personal preference, what you like best. <clears throat> so um, I'm gonna show you a video on how to do the drip process on UPO first. Oh no, I've never had that happen before. Let me go back a screen.
Ah, success. So I'd like to demonstrate two ways of using alcohol ink, a single color. I'm going to use a wild plum um, and I'm gonna use it on this Yupo paper. Um, I'm gonna use the drip alcohol method um, and the spray alcohol method with a hair dryer and see which one I, I prefer most. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just drip this randomly on the paper. I'm going to drip alcohol with my eyedropper onto the paper to make it thin. See it start reacting as soon as you add the paper. alcohol. And then I'm gonna turn on my hair dryer and blow it from different Mm -hmm. over here on my drawing okay i'm really liking that one that one's pretty cool now i'm going to take this one off set it aside for just one moment over here on my drawing spot and i'm going to come back with some clean paper and I'm going to do the same thing, only this time I'm going to spray it and see if it makes any difference. And as I've said already, I'm practicing this on paper, on this Yupo paper, before I practice it on glass, just to see um, how it's going to react for me. Right. What you get when you do the spray bottle is little tiny spots. Which is, uh, which is part of one of the techniques. One of the, um, is to get those little tiny spots, which to me look like little tiny bubbles. Oops, sorry about that. All right, I'm gonna get it pretty wet with the spray. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. And so now, just so you can see the difference between the two. I'm going to show you here on the paper towel the difference between how those tur two turned out. This one on the right was the drips. So strip is now on your left. <laughs> and these can become backgrounds for cards that I might want to do later. Um, but this is the, the preview for what I might do on glass. Okay, what questions do you have on that? Okay, I've got my glass Oops. block. Let me pause that. And just real quick I've got here. some paper towel under it. Underneath that, hoping the towel put this to a little bit better. And I've got my ink. Um, and I'm going to use the Bottle shaking. Can't pause it. Benita, it's permanent. But you can't, but that being said, you can keep adding layers. So it's permanent but you can keep changing it. So this is on the glass. This is, uh, any questions so far in the process before I hit the play on this, on the glass block. So I'm gonna do that same process all over again. This time on this glass block I got from Hobby Lobby. Um, you see them a lot at Christmas time. It was $10 for the glass block. I used a half off coupon or a 50, it was 50% 50 off sale. So I was able to get the glass block for 50% 50, um, 50 off. When I got done, I put a tea light in it. There's a hole in the bottom. I put the tea light in it and I had this ribbon in my uh, ribbon stash and put that around it. Um, these colors are kind of the uh, fall colors that are a lot of my house is decorated in those colors. And so uh, it really it really turned out nice. I also add a layer of metallic on here uh, toward the end. So here's the process for the glass block. And then just kind of drip it on just like I did on the paper. Randomly, drip on my bunch. And the 
last but not least, I'll get my character. Um, what is called? Which is my favorite one of these three colors, by the way. And then I'm going to see if I can get it to react. Now, I could just stop it. here, right? I could just stop kind of and say down. I like this, but I wanted to get it to react. Remember? And then I'm going to take my hair dryer and I'm going to blow it. by a different company and this one is a pearl um, and it's oh, I'm, it's, a, it's a brown and so let's see what this is. Right. a little bit of this color that makes a nice fall almost like a fall color but, and that's fun too this, this spray is the rubbing alcohol debbie Now I'm adding the metallics. This is a silver metallic. And this time, instead of spraying it, I'm going to take my dropper and I'm going to just lightly go on top of those and see if I can get them to react. We're going to be talking about sealing toward the end. It's, it's optional. Okay. I'm going to turn my dryer on low. Oh, sorry. <laughs> These silver metallics onto it. Let's see what happens with that. Oh, nice. And this time, Instead of spraying it, I'm going to take my dropper and I'm going to just lightly go on top of those and see if I can get them to react. Oh. No. All right. I'm going to see if I can pause this and answer a couple of questions here. But let me do this. So that shows you what it looks like after um, it's been dried. And you can see the pearl is laying, the, the metallic pearl is laying over the top. And that's what I meant when I was talking about layering. You can keep layering and you can keep layering. What you have to be careful of is not adding all the color at one time uh, because you can turn it into what they call mud and it basically turns gray or brown and it does not look nice. So let me answer a couple of questions. Um, so yes, I was using rubbing alcohol in my spray bottle and I was using rubbing alcohol in the dropper, but the ink that I was using is alcohol ink. I bought it that way. I, you have to buy it as alcohol ink. Now, if you go on Pinterest, there is, there, I have seen, I've never tried it, but I have seen several different um uh, pins that tell you how to make your own uh, inks using the inside the felt of a marker. You put it in isopropyl alcohol and it makes alcohol ink. I have, like I said, I haven't tried it. I suspect you can't get as strong of a pigment doing that. Pat, do you have any experience with that? No. Um, no, so I've actually bought markers in order to do that, and I've just never done it. <laughs> do it. Yeah, and so, I, I mean, the alcohol, The problem with the alcohol inks is they're a little bit expensive. I think for a set of three, I think full price was $12 uh, at a, like a Joann's or a Hobby Lobby or a Michael's. Um, I'm, the, I'm sure you can the, get off brands at different prices. Pat? Yeah, the key is to uh, wait until Michael has one of its like 50% or 60% off, Yes, which isn't as frequent, and then buy them. 
Right. Absolutely. And that's what I did. I had, I hit a 50% off sale um, because I don't, I don't, I just don't want to spend that much money on, on ink. That just seems like a lot. Um, okay. So ceiling, uh, Gloria has to leave early. Gloria, um, I want to tell you that if, when we get all done, you can order a copy of the video. Maybe Gloria's gone, gone already, but you can all order a copy of the video just by emailing help at getsetup.io and tell them you want a copy of Sarah's class on alcohol ink from today. And if you're a participant, you can get, they'll send you a copy right to your inbox. Um, I, I don't do it, but get set up, we'll do it. And then you can, you know, like queue up and watch something over again if you want to. Um, so just know that that's an option. Um, other questions on this, on this process before I go on to the next one. All right, this one is called smooshing. Actually, Benita, when I think about your paints, if you thin them out a little bit, this might be something you could get a similar uh, maybe look from your paints. It might be fun to try. So I this is I did it two different ways. I did smooshing two different ways. So the one on the left was uh, dripped on one piece of paper. Um, I used that Yupo paper and I dripped the ink directly onto the paper. I sprayed it with the, uh, the alcohol and then I laid the other paper over the top. And you don't what you don't do is twist it because that turns it into that mud I was talking about. You just lay it down on top. Press, I'm gonna show you, you press it down and then you lift it up. The other one, uh -huh. this one over here, what I did was I dripped my alcohol directly onto my metal pan. And then you folded it. And I didn't fold it, no. I put one on top of the other. Um, and, um, and with the second one, I dripped the um, ink onto the metal pan and laid the paper down on top. This was the first one. And see how the colors are kind of not straying together too much? This was my second one. And notice how much more purple there is in there. That's because my blue and my pink were reacting. I stopped. I did not do a third one, even though there was ink left on my um, pan, because I didn't want to end up with a wasted piece of paper um, because, uh, because I was afraid I was going to turn it into brown mud. So um, this technique, what you do is you drip up to three colors of alcohol ink onto your surface, which might be one of the pieces of Yupo, or it might be a uh, shiny surface like a glass pad or the cookie sheet. Um, you apply your paper on top and, and smoosh straight down. Or you can drip it onto the non-porous surface and smoosh it onto that. Any questions about the smooshing technique before I show you the video? Uh, yeah, how you twist the paper like Don't this? No, don't twist it. You don't want to. So when you're doing it, you I, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you in this video, actually. So watch and see if it makes sense. This next technique is called the smoosh technique. And I'm going to do it uh, two different ways. One is to apply my drops to my paper first. I'm applying my yellow kind of in the center. Just a little tiny drop here, and maybe a little tiny drop here, just kind of random. And then I'm going to do a bunch of pink down here. And I'm going to do a bunch of a teal over here. And just a little bit here, a little bit. No, I could I'm smoosh it random. right now, but I wanted more ink it. coverage. Just the tan. So I sprayed it with the isopropyl to alcohol. Give it nice and wet so it doesn't dry too fast. And then I'm going to smoosh it by pressing Straight the down. over the top and smooshing the ink out. Can you see it oozing out of the edges? And then once I think I've smooshed it all over, I'm going to take it off like this. And I've got two pretty uh -huh. interesting finished products there to let dry. So I'm going to put these off to the side to dry. And move my other one to right here. So I've got a drying area. One of the things about the alcohol is that it does uh, dry very, very fast. Um, so I just have to sit it over here for a moment. Okay, 
Now I'm going to wipe this off real quick with a paper towel. Only I'm going to do it on here. I like my yellow in the middle to kind of separate the two main parts of my colors. So I'm being pretty generous with my ink, but not too overbearing with it. I'm gonna put some, a lot of pink down on the sand though. And now I'm going to from the top down, I'm going to spray there and try to get it running. Blues to run just a little bit more. And then I'm going to take my piece of needle paper and I'm going to press my needle paper down on top. And without twisting too much, I'm going to try to make sure my whole surface is wet. One of the things um, that's kind of neat about this is if I wanted to do multiple prints, I could oh, look at that. That's awesome. So I'll just do that just for kicks and giggles. And then... So see, can you see how the color's pooling on the edge? And it, see how it's like this icky color? I saw two techniques online for how to solve that problem. One is when the while the ink is still wet, set the corner of it where the where it's running along the edges set the corner down on a paper towel and the paper towel soaks it right off that was one technique the other was to make your project big enough that you could trim your edges off when you were done and just and have those ucky edges taken right off of it um so i want to talk for a second how i got it on these salt and pepper shakers i'm going to i'm going to stop sharing for just one second so you can see me uh better can you see me better right now Yes. Okay. So the, I don't know if you can tell from your view, but the salt and pepper shakers do not have sharp corners. And so I was trying to figure out how am I going to get it on there and make sure my corners get covered too. And so what I did was I did the technique that you're seeing right there on the, or that you saw right there, the last technique that I did, where I put it on the paper, I put it down on the cookie sheet. Uh, and then I picked it up and I went like this. And then I went and then I, if I needed more ink, I put it back in, but I think I got, I think I may have gotten all four sides for each salt and pepper shaker off of one sheet of Yupo uh, at half of the five by seven size. And that was how I got it onto the salt and pepper shakers. Um, so that, that's that technique swooshing onto glass. Any questions on this technique before I go to the next one? I loved swooshing, it was fun. This next tech. I had a question. Yes. Is please. there an order that you lay the oh, color yes. down in? Yeah, thank you for asking. I saw that in the chat and I was saving it. And then you know how long that lasts, about until my cup of coffee wears off. <laughs> um, so I I I don't necessarily have a specific order per se. but I keep a couple things in mind when I do it. So I always like the lightest color in the center, you know, of, of what I'm doing. So like I put the yellow in the center and I put the darks around it. And I also kind of think in terms of a rainbow. So you, in on a rainbow, the blue and the yellow, I mean, sorry, the blue and the pink would be on opposite sides of the, of the rainbow spectrum. And so that was the other thing that I kind of thought of when I was doing it. Um, I would be afraid to do many more than three colors, although I did see on Pinterest some people were using up to six at a time, but I would not want to take a chance on uh, turning it into mud. So that's why I stopped at three. Does it answer your question, Nancy? Yes. Okay. All right. Any other questions before I go on? Great questions, you guys. Okay, this is the plastic wrap. I like smooshing because I like the sound of the word smooshing, but I liked the plastic wrap technique. It was a lot of fun. Um, and so these are the two examples. Uh, I want to show you this, uh, these two examples because this is a glass jar. Uh, I'm sorry, a glass goblet. This one is glass. This one is actually plastic, both purchased from the dollar store. 
So, um, so I wanted you to see on the smooth plastic, it turns out absolutely beautiful as well. Now, while I'm here and while I'm thinking about it, and I might mention it again later, but I want you to know that one of the things that I learned is even if you seal it, it's not food safe. And so um, what you see here, where I put it all the way to the rim, I should never- Never, We can't see your screen. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I forgot to reshare. Thank you, Pat. (laughs) Oh, goodness. That's what happens when I stop sharing. I forget where I'm at. Now, can you see it? Okay, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. Okay, so this is the glass goblet and this is the plastic goblet. And you can see that they both turned out absolutely beautifully. Now, uh, what I was saying is when I did these, I tried to take it all the way up to the rim. But when I was reading about sealing it, I found out there's really no food safe. There's nothing you can do to make it food safe. So the recommendations on a glass were to stop, uh, you know, where your lips would go on a glass to stop below that point. And I even saw one technique where somebody put like a painter's masking tape around the top. I don't know if I would like that because I like these kind of wispy edges to the ink. So I think if I were going to do it again, I would just stop lower. Um, but that, um, but that, that's what I'm going to show you next, just this plastic wrap technique. If you're going to try any one, I would recommend this because it's fast, it's easy, um, and your surface is your plastic wrap, so it's not nearly as messy. Um, but it is the it is the one that uses up the most ink because you don't thin it with alcohol at all. You're using the straight ink in this technique. So uh, watch along. This next method I purchased of an inexpensive wine glass from the dollar store, and I prepped it by rubbing the outside of it with rubbing alcohol already. I'm going to use my pearl ink, shake them up real quick, and I'm going to be liberal. And pour- uh, two things. If you're using regular alcohol ink, you don't have to shake it if it's regular alcohol ink, but if it has any kind of additive in it, like uh, an alloy or something to make it metallic, it has a little ball in it and you have to shake it to distribute those properties throughout the ink because it settles to the bottom. So if it's just regular alcohol ink with no additive, you don't have to shake it. But this one that I'm using on this uh, demonstration has pearl in it. And that's why I'm shaking it. And that's that ball sound that you're hearing. Pouring these all over just a sheet of inexpensive um, plastic wrap. Uh, Came out of the box. I mean, I'm not kidding. It's inexpensive. And I can just dribble it all over here. Do it pretty randomly. Try to go all over. Do my red. Try not to get it all over me. Trip it on here. And this is those pearl ones, remember, that I was showing you a minute ago. So I actually oh, started squirting it. If you notice, I'm actually I'm squirting instead of just dripping. Um, and then finally, I'm going to put the yellow one. Take it up just a tad, and I'm just going to be careful with this. I'm not going to be as liberal no. with it because I don't want to turn my colors in the mud. Then I'm going to take my glass. I'm going to put it in the middle, and this is kind of called the plastic method or the crinkle method, and I'm going to bring my corners up, and I'm just going to rub it all over that surface like that, and I'm going to let it sit on there and get real good and solid on the glass. You can see I've just wrapped it all the way around, and when that is has been sitting on there for a while, I'll take it off. I'll tell you how long I left it on there. I'll take it off and show you a picture what that looks like. So, um, no, once it's dried, it's no longer flammable. Once it's dry, if it's wet, if you want to do the flame technique, you have to do it while the ink is wet. Um, so it's not dangerous once it's, once it's thoroughly dried. I left that plastic wrap sitting on there for about 45 minutes before I peeled it off. So what I was trying to do is I was trying to get a good bond with the glass, um, but not such a good bond that the plastic stuck to the glass. 45 minutes worked really well. I don't know. I, maybe I could have taken it off sooner, um, but, I, but I didn't. I was doing some other projects, and so I just let it sit for about 45 minutes to get that look. So in this picture... 
Um, this is the uh, plastic one that I did second, this one right here. And then we're gonna go to the blotting technique next. Any questions on the plastic wrap before I move to the blotting? What the hell do you Christina, did you have a question? <laughs> Any questions before I move on to the um, before I move on to the to the blotting technique? Okay, here we go. So blotting, what I used for the blotting technique was a, a cosmetic. Let me take. I'm going to take it off. Stop share. Pat, remind me to put it back on share again if I forget. <laughs> um, so what I used was this was a package of cosmetic. This was a package of cosmetic sponges. And what you're going to see me demonstrating in the video is putting it on the side. As I practiced and practiced with it, I found it worked much better if I put it on the ends. And I put it on, like, uh, if I was using the blue and the red and the yellow, I, I did it the same way I did on my paper, where I put the blue on one end, the pink on the other end, and the yellow in the middle, and I just kept blotting. So one of the ones that I don't show you how I did was this little glass jar. This was also Hobby Lobby. This was $1.99. I got it on the 50% off sale. I blotted, I, did, I took the jar and I just blotted it with that ink on it every once in a while. If it started getting too transparent, I would re-blot. Um, one of the things that I found um, when I was blotting the plate was that once I poured the ink on, if I stamped once on the paper towel first and then started blotting, I didn't get the run under the stencil, but uh, it worked great on this. And, um, and it was fun. This was a lot of fun. And I could see that like sitting with, on my cosmetics counter or filled with craft supplies or, I mean, it was just, or a little gift, you know, filled with little surprises, but that's the cosmetic sponge that you're going to see in here. And this is the plate, the glass plate. So this is the stencil method. And this is a stencil that I chose for this. I like this stencil because it's got basically three designs in it and I have three colors. You forgot to share. Share, share your screen. <laughs> also from the dollar store um, to use for this project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my lightest color first. Thank and you. I'm going to use my most, uh, I don't know what I want to call that, but the this has the least amount of overall design to it. So I want to make that as much my base as I can. So I'm just going to I'm going to take my yellow alcohol ink, butterscotch. So I applied from Don't lightest to darkest. It, although that can be really, uh, that can this be one. a bit can't it? Um, and I'm going to soak my sponge with it, with the yellow, the butterscotch. It's okay to leave this open. Um, it's designed so that you can leave it open. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to just start splooshing right over my... Now, can you see, like on this dot right here, that was my first one that I laid down. It ran under the stencil and I was not happy with how it looked. And that's why dabbing it off first on the, um, on the paper towel, just one time, that's all it took. And it stopped that running under the stencil altogether. Design. This is, I picked a white plate for this project so you could see what it looked like on white instead of clear. And do it again. And I just like randomly do that the, all over the plate. Perfection is what is expected um, with this. So I don't need to get the complete design. I just need to make it, um, make it look like there is design there. And so you can see I'm going up on the edges and, and I'm not getting as much on the edges as I got. In the center, my thumbs want to press down and just pressing that down. It alcohol ink dries very quickly, so I can get my overall design on relatively quickly. I'm going to throw this away and I'm going to go to my um, red. Next, and I'm going to use this design that's right here in the corner. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the butterfly that's blue uh, over here. And I'll come back with a picture of that in the end. 
So this is the um, so let me just go back a couple screens so that you can see that plate again finished. So that's the finished plate. And again, I wanted to show you on the white surface so you could see what it looks like on white instead of clear. Now, if I was going to use these to decorate a table and eat, what I would do is put a clear glass plate on top of it so that the pattern still showed through, um, but I wasn't putting my uh, food directly on the ink. Um, any questions on the blotting technique? One of the things that I was sharing was uh, that I skipped ahead a little bit is if you want to look up what this style is, it sometimes is called grunge, G-R-U-N-G-E, -E, grunge. It's also sometimes called shabby chic. Um, it's the idea that it does look messy. It looks, it makes it look old when you're not getting the entire design laid down in every spot. It's not clean. It's not a clean look, but that's by design. All right, those are our four techniques that I'm going to show you today. Now, I in this video, what I and I don't think I'm gonna. Well, maybe I will. Let me see how long this will. See, this is just a minute. One one of the things that I'm very curious about is they said that if it's a, a metal or glass surface, um, that if you spray it with the rubbing alcohol, that it will rub off. So this is a metal cookie sheet. And I'm curious to see, can I get it all off? So my suspicion at this point is that because some of it dried and some of it was still damp, that um, I'm probably out of luck, which is why I'm here. So if you one, get it, one of the things if you get it while it's wet, you can get almost all of it off. But so what it left behind on my metal sheet was a stain that won't that won't interfere with any uh, future projects. Um, so just know that, um, it, you know, what I'm going to do is this was, I literally got this cookie sheet from the dollar store. So I will dedicate this cookie sheet to my um, alcohol ink projects. And that way I don't have to worry about it. Um, any questions on that? Glass, the one that was highly recommended uh, over and over again was a clear glass mat. Um, and of course, Tim Holtz and Ranger Inks sell those. I'm sure they're very expensive. Um, you could just use a, you could just use anything that's clear glass, but that is the most forgiving as far as getting all of the ink up and not holding any stain. Um, this is a quick video. Remember I told you I didn't put gloves on and you're all wondering how did I get that all off my hands? So here you go. I picked up this hand sanitizer when I was in town. Um, and my understanding is that it takes all of the alcohol ink off. So let's see what it does with my skin. I use it, as you can see, I just used a gob because I've got a whole bunch of the ink on my hands. And you can see it's coming off. What I suspect it's not going to come off of, however, is my fingernails. And so I may go back later on and try to hit my fingernails with some bleach. But I'm going to go to the kitchen and I'm going to finish washing it off. But I wanted you to see that the uh, hands. So the hand sanitizer was recommended because it's uh, it's not quite as hard on your skin as pure rubbing alcohol, but it does have the solvent in it, which is why it works. It did not come off my fingernails. Um, what I did, and I, I know this is terrible, uh, but I, I put my fingernails, just my, you know, the tips of my fingers in straight bleach and it came right out of my fingernails, um, but it's not good for your skin. So don't do what I did. <laughs> But if, just know that it is going to stain your fingernails if you don't put rubber gloves on when you do it. So what are the benefits of sealing a project? So these were the recommended sprays. Krylon Kemar Varnish Spray was the number one recommended spray. You can get it in any big box store and, and, and a lot of the craft stores sell it as well. Um, there's also a UV resistant spray. Um, I bought the the, top, the first one, the varnish spray, um, and it works very well. There's the Krylon Triple Thick Crystal Clear, which gives it a nice look. You can also use a spray-on polycrylic. I, I saw this on the internet. I don't know anything about the polycrylic. 
And if you don't want to spray and you want to paint on, you can use epoxy resin and seal it that way. But I'll remind you again that there is no sealant that's labeled food safe. So you can't do this and then eat on top of it or put your lips on it. Um, so you have to design your dishes, mugs, and et cetera around the notion that no food or a person's mouth should touch the sealant. Um, and I already talked about what that means on a glass or a mug. Any questions on the sealants? Safety tips, do it in a well-ventilated, oh, I know one thing I was gonna say earlier that I forgot. You know that I was using a hair dryer quite often and a lot of people, often a question is, do I have to use a hair dryer? The answer is no. You can move it around with, uh, you could move it around with a heat gun if you want, just know that a heat gun is gonna make it dry super fast. Um, so you, you're, you're gonna have not as much movement with a heat gun. You can also use a straw and blow it or you can use a bulb syringe. Uh, so like I used a bulb syringe with my children when they were little to remove uh, residue from their nostrils. Do you know what I'm talking about? You can get them in the, like in the pharmacy section. Um, also Tim Holtz sells one for, you know, like $20 a, a bulb, a um, lot cheaper to go the other way. Um, but the, you can, so that the problem with the straw is you're not supposed to inhale it because it can get in your lungs. And if you do a lot of it, it can be dangerous. There were some websites that, uh, actually recommended, um, uh, using a, a ventilator mask, um, making sure your area is well ventilated, uh, wear gloves. If you don't like your fingers stained, remember that it's flammable when it's wet, but not dry and wash with hand sanitizer. Um, to remove it from your skin. Um, I showed you how you can get it off your skin using the uh, rubbing alcohol, or um, you can, uh, you can, oh, you can actually remove it from your project if you remove it while it's still wet. But if it started to dry, it just stains your background. 91% um, alcohol, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol was the recommended uh, saturation of alcohol. Um, remember to protect your work surface. Um, and remember, if you mix your cum too much color in one spot, you can get mud. Pat, do you have any tricks that you want to add that I haven't covered? I was just going to say about blowing through the straw. Yeah. That um, it can make you lightheaded. So oh. don't blow long. Yeah, good hard. point. Yeah. yeah. It, it really isn't recommended because of the kinds of things you're saying, but it is a technique that you'll see. And I use that often. Do you? Okay. Got any other tips for us, Pat? Um, no, you're doing a, a great job. What do you think about do you? What do you think about applying it to glass? You know what? I'm going to try it. I, I'm not really familiar with the plastic wrap uh -huh. method. Yeah. And so I think today I'm going to try that. Great. Great. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, when I get done, I'm going to send you these resources. I watched both of these presentations. Tim Holtz does a, a Facebook Live, but you don't have to have Facebook to get to this. You can get to it by Googling it. Um, and you see one of them was two and a half hours and the other one was three and a half hours. It is like an entire course on alcohol inks. I'll send you this in the email follow up you get from me. So watch for that email. It was amazing. I mean, everything you ever wanted to know about alcohol inks, he covers uh, everything. So that's one thing I'll send you. I'm going to send you a safety sheet too. The safety sheet is a little bit overbearing because it covers, uh, it, it's like what you would send to the government when you want to be safe. Uh, school, For example, in my job at the school, we had to file those for any of the cleaning products we had in the building. Um, I'm going to send that to you just so you have it. Um, and... Uh, that's that's what we've covered today. We've covered uh, why it was inspired by Chihuly, which I spelled wrong on my slide. What it what alcohol ink is, four techniques for using it on glass, and tips and tricks. Here's some of my uh, related classes that are coming. I'm actually developing four this week on crocheting. Uh, one on one on crocheting and additional on re reading patterns. Crocheting one on reading knitting patterns. One on using Pinterest to find your favorite crafts and hobbies, and one on calligraphy. So join me this week, this next week on those classes if you're interested. Um, what questions do you have before we sign off? 
I just have another comment. I do have the Tim Holtz glass mat. Yeah. Cleaning it up is a breeze. It is so easy. Pat, do you uh, remember no what you paid on it? Do you remember? Do you remember what you paid for that? No, but it wasn't. What What did you say? It wasn't that much. I I I didn't know the price. I didn't look up the price on it. I just it, know that his price his products tend to be a little bit pricey, but it looked like a dream. Yeah, and it is expensive. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not like ten dollars. Yeah. So it is expensive. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, the other thing is on YouTube. There's a ton of shorter classes on alcohol ink techniques good point. a ton yeah good point yeah you don't have to watch five hours <laughs> and on pinterest again a ton of beautiful yeah you know images yeah yeah Put in, uh, if, you, if you type alcohol ink techniques you'll get dozens of ideas maybe hundreds i don't know all right well it's been a joy to be with you today Watch for my follow-up email and you'll have uh, some tips and tricks in there. And I hope you get brave and give some of these a try uh, and, uh, and come back and let me know how it worked out. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. It was a lovely Thank information. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Good. Thank you. I'll stay on for just a minute in case anybody has a follow-up question. Great class. Great class. Thank you. Thank you, Wilhelmina. Well, well, <laughs>